Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this week's market report for Thursday, March the 14th, 2024. I am your host, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina, Sammy Fryer, and it is a pleasure to be here with you this evening. And tonight's video is going to be the first installment of what I plan to be a series. Every Tuesday at seven o'clock, I plan to release these videos that's going to give you a market update, much like what we're going to go over tonight. Tonight's video is going to be a little bit longer than what I would like to do because I'm going to have to go over multiple housekeeping things just to kind of set the stage and tempo for what we're planning to do. There are over 100 million houses or homes in the United States. At any given time, approximately 1% of those homes are listed on the market for sale. The software that we are looking at updates every seven days with active data looking at those homes. The data gets captured that we're looking at every Friday for the previous week. It gets released on Sunday. We'll skip Monday because on Monday, everybody's week is starting. They're trying to get into the mode of the week. By Tuesday evening, you've settled into the week and we'll have this show that's available for you to stay up to speed with where we're at in our local market or any market in the United States for that matter, as you can search any zip code, any city that you want to for free. And so at the back end of this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can get these reports sent to you for free and how you can use the features for free. The other housekeeping thing that I need to point out about the software that we're gonna be looking at tonight and in the future is the, the timeline. So this software is taking said data that I mentioned and it's moving on a running five year period. So we can look backwards over five years. This is good for us to see seasonal trends, cyclical patterns, that kind of thing. Being that the data updates every seven days, there is a seven day line on the graph that we can look at. But that seven day line is a lot busier, it's a lot more volatile. We're gonna probably spend most of our time looking at the 90 day window, which is the other option. And this helps broaden the picture a little bit so we can get a little bit better view of the data as it kind of balances out over a 90 day window. And so that's what we're gonna be looking at this evening and pretty much for the most part moving forward. That's a general overview of where the data is coming from that we're looking at, how it's pulled together and how it's presented. And again, the plan is gonna to be to do this show. It's a weekly market update every Tuesday. I'm gonna to plan to release them at seven o'clock on Tuesday evenings. So with that being said and out of the way, let's dive right into this week's. And like I said, this one's gonna be a little bit longer because I'm gonna to have to slow down and kind of explain things about each thing we're looking at that I won't explain in the future. Now I do plan to drop one video just overviewing this software because many of you are going to ask to receive these reports and many of you already are receiving these reports. And so I will do a video to go over just focusing on how these reports are designed, what information they display, why it's relevant and how it's pulled together in a little bit more detail. But that'll be a separate video just isolated for its own self as kind of a tutorial of the software. But these weekly reports are going to be actually looking at the data. So let's jump in. I will do a little bit of that here, but not a whole lot because I do plan to release that video in the future. But even the little bit I do plan to do tonight is gonna slow us down a little bit. The plan will be for these shows to be 15 minutes or less moving forward. That's really where I'd like to keep it. All right, so with all that said, let's dive in. Okay, so on your report, you have this super handy little tool right here. So what this is, this barometer is a market action index. And what this is doing is it's taking all the data that we're about to look at and cover, actually not all that we're gonna cover, it's what is, it's taking everything that we're gonna cover and more, because we're not gonna cover everything on this list. But it's taking all of this data and it puts together a barometer that tells you whether we were in a buyer's market, a neutral market, which is here in the middle, which would be 30, or a seller's market. It also has two bars, which will let you distinguish between where we are today, where the market is right now, as opposed to where we were last month. And so again, we're about to get into the nuts and bolts of all of this, but just as a high level example of what this is, you can see that we're at 38 slight seller's advantage right now, just a hair less than it was last month, okay? The key questions that people wanna know when talking to a realtor is, how's the market? What's my house worth if they're looking to sell or if they're looking to buy or both? What can I get for my money right now? I have X amount of dollars to spend. What can that buy me in the current market? That's what we're trying to ascertain when we're looking at this data. That's really what the whole name of the game is. That's what this is all about. And that's what we want to provide to you every week in these market updates, okay? Slight seller's advantage in the market. And that is indeed what we've been seeing. But let's look at what that means and how we come to that conclusion. And I, I want to set the stage with one more key piece of information that I just stated. 
People want to know how is the market today? So when realtors are putting together home valuations, market analysis, those kind of things for you, we're using a variety of stats, okay? We're using multiple data points to determine the value of homes and you know the best times to sell and buy, all that kind of stuff. And the fact of the matter is that a key piece of information or, or a key data point that realtors are trained to look at is the statistics of homes that have closed. So these are sales prices of transactions that have closed. And that's great. There's a, there's, a, there's a very important need for that data, but there's also a frailty in that data, and this is why. When homes go under contract, they close on an average of about 30 to 60 days later. So what does that mean? That means that if you're looking at the sales price of a home, meaning the price that a home was sold for, then that data is actually a month to two months old because that contract was negotiated 30 to 60 days ago. So when we're looking at sold home prices, we're actually looking in the rear view mirror, which is valuable and important. That information and data tells us things that can be very helpful for us in putting together market analysis, doing evaluation, all of those kinds of things. But there's also a huge relevance in understanding where the market is today. And as you're gonna see when we pull these graphs up, the market can change a lot in one month. And so if I'm giving you a home valuation, for example, so if you call me in to do a listing presentation, and you say, Sam, you know, um, what's the value of our home? And I'm laying all the data out to you. I want to be able to show you and I want you to understand also where the market is today. So we want to know where we've been. We want to know what's been going on around us over the last couple of months. But we also want to know where we are and can we get an idea of where we're going? Are there patterns or projections that we can look at? Because that could make the difference in twenty or $30,000, forty dollars or $50,000 maybe, Either way, what the reports that we're looking at tonight tell us is where we are today, okay? Now, we're also gonna look back in the rearview mirror tonight as well, but I just want you to have that also in the forefront of your mind as one of the most critical components of the value of what we're doing tonight and what we're gonna be doing on Tuesdays, okay? All right, so you have your barometer measuring seller's market, buyer's market. Again, one of the things that I won't probably say in future videos, but I'll say tonight just to set the tempo, What's the difference in a buyer's market and a seller's market? Well, let's make it practical. So say that I'm selling my home and I have a $350,000 home and there are three homes total in my bracket that are out there in our entire community. And so in the Florence area, there are three homes, including mine, that are in that $350,000 range, okay? And let's say that there are 20 pre-approved buyers in the market that are shopping in that range then what we have is a seller's market because the sellers have the advantage. The reason being, there's only three of these houses to choose from. And so my competition as a seller is not amongst the other sellers. The competition in terms of the selling of these homes is amongst you 20 buyers. That's where all the competition is at. So you guys are gonna have to outbid one another and that puts us sellers in a position where we can ask higher and higher listing prices for our homes. We have an advantage because the supply is not as high as the demand, or shall I say the inventory levels are far below the demand. And so all of you guys are fighting for our homes. That's a seller's advantage. The buyer's advantage or the buyer's market is the exact opposite. There's 20 homes like mine available in the community and there's only three of y'all looking for them. So you have your pick of the litter. And so I have to price my home extremely competitively to get your business, to sell my home to you. Does that make sense? So it's, it's really simple. It's just supply and demand. It's inventory levels compared to the demand or the buyers that are available in the market at that time. Okay, so I think we've set the stage on enough things. So let's dive into the data and see what we find. So remember, we're gonna be looking at the 90-day average, not the seven-day average, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of that so it's not so busy. Now, the first thing I just wanna point out is median house price. So the median house price on a 90 day average right now, as of March the 8th, so going back to last Friday, is $300,000 roughly. That's 10% less than where we were at last year, which was also a decrease from where we were the year before that. 
All right. So we're seeing this median price annually showing itself to drop now after two years of data to look at. Now we're going to look at why some of this is happening here in a minute, but let's go ahead and go to our next data point. Inventory levels, 71 units available on the market on a 90 day running average as of last week. That's 30% less than where we were a year ago. The median days on market, 61, 103 last year. And you may say to yourself, well, if the median days on market has dropped significantly because that's 41% decrease from where we were a year ago, then wouldn't that mean that the market's hotter? Well, it would, but you have to take into account the inventory available has also dropped 30%. So there's not as much activity in terms of inventory and buyers in general. Now I'm going through these kind of fast tonight because I have to spend so much time on some of the peripheral things because I don't want this video to be too long. So once we move over to next week, I'm not going to repeat a lot of the things I said tonight. I'll probably keep a link to an overview video down in the description of these at all times. And I'll just mention that for anybody that's, that's new that needs to understand how the software works and the data that we're looking at and I'll take more time on the actual data starting next week. But let's go ahead and go to the next thing and let's look at properties with price decreases. So these are properties that get listed that have to reduce their price. And many of you out there have experienced that over the recent six or seven months. And the number right now is at 43%. Now that number is down a little bit from where we were last year, not much, now the expected average for that number is supposed to be 30 to 35. So if the number is higher than 35, then it indicates that the market is moving over into the buyer's advantage. If the number is less than 30%, then that indicates that the market is heating up for sellers. We've seen the market shift in our area heavily from being heavily in favor of sellers to getting much more closer to neutral. And so, so let's go back and look at every data point that we just discussed. Let's start with median list price, 90 day average. And if you look here, where's the anomaly at? It's right here, a big spike between September 2nd, 2022 and June 3rd. But remember on the seven day average, whatever that, whatever that trend is actually started a little bit earlier. So it's really April 29th, right? But the bottom line is in spring of 2022, there was a shift in what was happening, okay? And we see this spike. Now let's go look at average or median days on market was another subject that we covered. Same thing, all right? We see this giant spike, but where did that trend start to climb? Again, would have been around very early summer of spring or spring of 2022. So there is this cyclical or, or patterned nature of how our market fluctuates and moves. And so what we're looking at is we have to consider that whenever we're looking at pricing a home or determining what to pay for a home. But then we also have to keep that in our mind when we're looking for outliers in the data. Are there anomalies that have caused what would be a normal seasonal pattern to change? And that's some of what we're seeing here and some of y'all already know what that is looking at the timeline here. So let's look at one or two more of these and then let's see what's going on. You see yet again that in spring of 2022, these properties with a price decrease, meaning that they had to reduce the asking price of the home to get it sold, began to increase to where we saw this spike about a year ago. And it's the same thing with inventory levels, as you can see. Around spring of 2022, inventory levels began to increase and now we're seeing some of this start to stabilize out. And that's, that's what I want to really drill in. So what is happening here? So the data is telling us that something happened in spring, early summer of 2022. Well, what was it? Well, we know the interest rates, this is when they began to climb. And they peaked around October of last year, around 8%, but still right now they're over 6%. Interest rates are still high. What this has done is it's pulled buyers out of the marketplace. So there's less buyers because interest rates are higher. And so naturally this is what's affecting the entire market. So hence the price decreases that we've seen, hence the inventory levels spiking as we've seen. And now where it appears that we're at is that the market is starting to balance itself out. And that's why when we went back to the uh, market index that we looked at at the beginning, that barometer, you see that it's getting closer and closer to a neutral market. 
And that's indication of exactly what we're looking at. The market is balancing itself out in the current conditions. What can we say about interest rates? We know that Chairman Powell came out and said a few weeks back that the interest rates are not going to be dropping right now like some had hoped in the spring or the early spring. They want to have confidence that inflation is going to dip down below 2%. And I'll put a link down to that press conference down in the uh, description of this video so that you can go look at it if you want to. But they want to have confidence. And he was asked a bunch of different ways about interest rates and he kept saying the same thing in different words. And so they're looking for something. He said they already feel confident. They just want to see a continuation of those indicators. And so we have reason to be confident. We have reason to be mildly optimistic that things are, that interest rates will start to decrease. Many believe maybe moving into the summer. And so if that is the case, then that will certainly be something that will factor in and looking at where the market is going to go. So I just wanted to point this out. You know, we're just kind of setting the tempo of the kind of thing that we're going to be doing moving forward. But by looking at this data, we're able to see certain things. And in this case, I just wanted to highlight that there's this commonality with each data point we looked at where there was a shift in things. There was a shift in the market around spring of 2022. And we know what the variable was at that time was this increase of interest rates would have been increasing every since. And they peaked out, hopefully in last October, there was the peak. Like I said, people are mildly optimistic that and hopeful that they'll start to come down moving into the summer and the later portions of this year. And so if that happens, that could affect our, our normal um, market trends in terms of our local market in Florence peaking around July or in, in the later portions or, you know, the middle to later portions of summer, maybe we could see the market have some hotter activity moving later in the year than we normally would. We'll see. But I would suggest to you that the data shows that where we're at right now is a balancing. And so the bottom line is, it would appear from looking at the data that there was a great reaction to the increased interest rates the increased interest rates, which resulted in an abundance of inventory and a lack of buyers. And that started to really catch on. I remember this is moving backwards, but that you see this dip here at a time that would normally be a peak time in our market, right? You see like June is a peak in 2021. And in 2022, June is when everything started to drop off. And remember that this data is about a month behind. So really, you're looking at May. And this was the result of people's reaction to these increases in interest rates. And they kept increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing until the point to where we've inched much closer to a neutral market. And then it kind of started to balance out from here. Okay. And right around October of last year is where we saw that peak at around 8%. And honestly, our market's still performing pretty well from that standpoint, at least. And then moving into our peak time of the year, but nothing like it was back here before all of this really started to happen, right? I mean, look at the difference in that. 73, a 73 score as opposed to a 55 score. Okay, but this is seasonal activity. But when you see this big gap, what you're seeing is this interest rate factor, okay? And so what we're looking at is things seem to be balancing out and everybody's waiting to see what's gonna happen with interest rates, all right? All right, so like I said, tonight's video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm more kind of outlining the software and giving you guys exposure to it. And we move into next week's show and each subsequent show after that, the plan is going to be to just get into the data and I'll have some material out for people that need to get caught up to go look at separately. And we won't go over some of this stuff. Let me show you a couple more features of this so that you can really dial in what this tool is and how you need to be using it and how you can use it. And then I'm going to tell you how to access it for free. Okay. So let me point out a couple of key pieces of information. The first thing is this data is great, but our market is in segments. Okay. And so what the software does is it breaks our entire market up into four segments and it takes 25% of the market on each level. And then it runs an average of all those. And that's what these numbers are here. And so what that means in layman's terms is if I go up here and this is what you're going to want to do, 
you're going to want to click market segments, okay? And if I cut all of these on, the bottom 90, the lower 90, the upper 90, the top 90, that's, that's these numbers down here, okay? So go back to my example. If I was one of the buyers in that example and I had a pre-approval for $350,000 and I was looking in the $300,000 to $400,000 range, $350,000 home range, then I would be in this segment here and I would want to take this tool and I would want to knock out the other segments. So this is the second from the top. So it's not the top 90 day. It's not the lower 90 day. That's this one. And it's not the bottom 90 day. That's this one. Okay. So I'm in this segment. So you can take all of these data points that we looked at, okay, and, and look at that in your market segment. Now I'm going to show you why that's important. And so the cool thing for buyers is if you have a $350,000 pre-approval and you're in Florence right now, then you know that on average, this is a ballpark, but you can look at this and get a general idea immediately of where your what your shopping is going to look like, what you could expect to get for your money. And this is a key question that buyers want to know. We talked about that at the beginning. What can I get for the amount of money that I have to spend? And so if your budget is $350,000, then you know that you're looking at around 2,500 square feet of home, about a half acre to an acre of land, four bedrooms, three baths, and around a 40-year-old home. Also, you want to notice the days on market average in your price range. The reason that this segmenting of the market is really important for you on the individual level, so when we're doing these videos, we're gonna look at everybody because we're not gonna single out one particular segment because we don't know who's watching the video. So we want to show our entire market. But if you access this tool, and I will send it to you for free, then you're gonna to want to segment the market that you're shopping in or that you're selling in. And so from the buyer's example, this is important like we just looked at, this, some of the value in that. But notice how the different segments behave very differently, okay? So the absorbability right now in the $350,000 range is much different than the absorbability in the $250,000 range. So what this means is that for every two houses that are going onto the market, five are being absorbed in this 90-day period. And so this affects supply and demand, and so this affects how quickly we need to move on a home. Uh, if you want to put an offer in and be competitive, all these different variables that your realtor is going to go through with you looking at this data and understanding where we're at today. Same thing if you're a seller. So let's use price per square foot as an example. If you're looking at price per square foot and you do not segment out your home value, then the 90-day average, the current average for, our, for 29501 is $139 per square foot. Well, if you segment the market and you have a $600 plus home, okay, and you know that, then you want to segment out your market segment, which is going to be the top 90 day in that scenario, and that average is 154 That's a $15 per square foot difference. So if you have a 4,000 square foot house or 4,500 4, square foot house that's going to be priced somewhere in the $600,000 range, $15 per square foot is a really big deal, okay? So you're going to want to have that data. That's not an end-all, be-all to pricing your home, but you're going to want to look at that data because it's a, it's a very important piece of the puzzle that you can add in when pricing your home appropriately or that your realtor can be looking at to price your home appropriately, okay? So it's, it's valuable data. And so what you want to do is make sure that you're segmenting out where you sit in the market when you're looking at this data on an individual level, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. All right, again, so just to recap, uh, because I think that this video is going long enough, I wanna keep these 15 minutes or below. Moving into next week, where these will be much shorter. We're gonna just go straight into the data and look at where our local market is at in Florence for the week, okay? That'll be every Tuesday at seven o'clock. Now, if you want to access these reports, all of my contact information is down in the description. You can email me, you can call me, you can text me if you want to, and I will send these to you, okay? These are free reports. They're not gonna cost you a thing, and they'll come directly to your email weekly. Now, I wanna show you something else, okay? When you get the report, I've kinda of showed you a little bit about how to use it. I do plan to do a tutorial video that'll go a little bit more in depth of how to use and read the report for any of you that are accessing it, and I'll try to get that out in the next couple of weeks. But I want to show you one more thing. When you get the report, you're not limited 
to anything. So if you go right up here to the top, you can search any zip code or city in the country for free and get all of this information that is up to date information that is updated weekly. So this is very current information you're looking at. It's the most current information you can find on the market, honestly. So you could go up here and say you want to look at Miami, Florida, right? Type in Miami, Florida, go to view report for the whole city. And there you go. Look at the median list price in Miami. How about that? Okay, so you can look anywhere in the country at these reports, okay? And it's the same report, same market segmenting, median list price of the top 90, 2.6 million is the top market segment in Miami, okay? So you can go anywhere in the country and look at these reports, okay? So if you wanna access these, again, email me, call me, or uh, you can even text me if you want to, that's fine and I'll respond to you as quickly as possible and I'll get these over to you, okay? The last thing I'll say is I hope that some of this shows you that there's a lot of variables we wanna look at whenever we're either determining how much to offer for a home or if we're putting a valuation on a home that we're looking to sell. But the bottom line is what is the value of the home in question? And there's a lot of variables that need to be considered. There's seasonal activity, it's good to be aware of that. There's outliers and variables that are affecting market trends. There's the current state of our market and the activity that's going on around us. And then there's the look in the rearview mirror in terms of sold prices. Then of course you start to narrow down to the actual specifics of the property in question. So there's a lot of variables and we want to, as I talked about in this previous video, we want to narrow down our home valuations, you know, within probably five to three and a half percent really. We want to be close. And we wanna understand the market around us, not so that we can have the lowest price possible and make sure we sell the home. What we're actually trying to do is get the greatest value we can for the home as a seller, but still actually sell the home and get offers, right? And as a buyer, we don't wanna overpay. So we want to pay, of course, the seller is gonna to want top dollar for what it's worth, but we're gonna to wanna to figure out exactly what that value is and make a competitive offer for the home so that we can secure the home that we're excited to buy. So valuation's critical, and there's a lot of factors involved in an accurate valuation of a home. Okay, so with that being said, if you would like a free home valuation, again, all of my contact information is down in the description of the video. You can reach out to me in any of the ways that I mentioned, email, call, or text. And likewise, you can reach out to me if you'd like to schedule a buyer's consultation. And so I would absolutely love to work with you. I'd like to sit down and open up all of this data, unpack all of it, and see how it's relevant to your goal in terms of either selling or buying your next home. And so I look forward to hearing from you. If you enjoyed this video and you found it valuable, please give it a like, because that helps us to continue to put out future content for you guys. If you wanna be notified of these weekly market updates and to see the other content that we plan to release and that we are releasing on the channel, subscribe to the channel, of course, hit the notification so that you'll get notified whenever a video is released. And so if there's anything I didn't cover or if what we did cover provoked any questions that you wanna know about, please leave a comment so that I can either uh, cover it in the comment section or circle back around to it in a separate video or in next week's market update. Or as always, just like everything else, you can just reach out to me and ask me directly, okay? So of course my camera would die right at the end of that. But with that being said, you guys reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, y'all take care and we'll see you soon.